Hey everyone, Joey here. So Gamma OS is out for full release on the RG405V. And in this video, I'm gonna help you set it up and just go over why it might be better for you to install. But first, what is Gamma OS? And at its core, it's just a custom firmware for the RG405E that's also on other systems. So you might be familiar with it on the RG405M or RG505. So it's been around forever and it's been kind of the must have and go to custom firmware for all of those devices. And now you have that on the 405V. So what all do you get? It's basically a lineage OS that's just been prepackaged to work with the RG405 series. And so you get some benefits there and we'll go over a little bit of them. But the general idea is it just gives you two different versions. There's a light version, which is without the Google Play Store. And then there's a full version, which is the one I recommend. And it has the Play Store as well as the Aurora Store. And it's just a better overall package. Now on this, Digisho as a front end is pre-configured for a few systems that are on Retroarch. And Retroarch for emulators is pre-configured as well. But of course, this is not gonna include any ROMs or BIOS files. You're gonna have to provide those yourself. There's now setting tiles that have been added for performance modes, changing button layout, fan control, stick sensitivity, inverting the analog axis, and swapping the D-pad and left analog inputs. Ad guard ad blocking has been included by default for anybody browsing those very bad websites. The display has been fixed to 60 Hertz here, which is a, just another kind of good quality of life improvement. And in general, you're just going to get a lot more battery and better performance, which Gamma himself says it's about 10% more than what stock is. Now, if you're just opening the RG405V for the first time, then you can skip this next part that I'm going to go over. But for everybody else that maybe has been playing their RG405V for a while now, and you have saves and states and all of that, you're going to want to back all of that up because when we do this flashing and when we put this new firmware on, it's gonna erase everything on here. So the best thing that you can do is get it all off and maybe just put it on your computer in a folder or SD card, which you're gonna pop out, something like that. But either way, you wanna get all of those saves and states off and any other important documents that you have on here. For RetroArch, all of the saves and states are in your internal storage, the RetroArch folder, and then the saves and states folder. For other emulators, there's just so many that I can't go over all of them, but they're all in different locations. Once you've done all that, make sure that you eject your SD card and there's no SD card included because you could screw up some steps if you have that in. For everybody else, I'm gonna be doing the Windows guide and I'll leave a link in the description to the written guide for anybody that has a Mac or Linux or whatever you have. It'll all be detailed there. Also, if during any of this video, if you run into an issue that I don't show on screen for whatever reason, and you check the wiki in the description and you couldn't figure it out there, then check the Discord in my description and the RG405 channel. And that's where uh, Gamma will be. And he'd be able to help you out with any issues that you have as well as the rest of the community. The comments and me, I won't be the best person to help you out with issues. So just go that route if you run into issues. Lastly, before you start, make sure that your battery is at 100% or as close to it as you can get for calibration issues, as well as you don't want this failing because of battery. Put it that way. By the way, are you looking for any chargers for the RG405V or any other retro handhelds? I've been using Ugreen for a while now, and they just sent me over two new chargers that are perfect for retro handhelds. This 65 watt mini charger has fast charging. And when I say mini, it's mini. This little charger is small. There's a USB-A port for the handhelds that still need USB-A to see charging. Looking at you, PowKitty RGB30. Then there's two USB-C ports and you can charge three devices at once, of course. It also does Samsung's 45 watt super fast charging 2.0 with my phone, which is also awesome. And so I can get back to filming quickly. Or if you're on that other side of the fence with the fancy MacBook Air, you can go from zero to 70 in an hour with this little thing. It's an awesome little charger. But let's say that you want more because you have an ROG Ally or a Legion Go or a Steam Deck or something like that. That's where the 100 watt model comes in and surprise again, it's not even that much bigger than the 65 watt in size. 
Compare it to the bricks that these devices ship with, and now you can even save some more space as well. Same three ports here, except for a combined 100 watt of charging now, and it still does Samsung's 45 watt super fast charging 2.0, which is awesome. This time for you Apple fans, it charges from 0 to 86% in an hour. Check out the link in my description to order either of these two chargers or any charger. Ugreen has a whole bunch of them and they might work out for you. Okay, so Windows users, go ahead and install the Universal ADB driver. And that's linked in the description as link number one. You can select the EXE version, not the portable one. Go through the install process and make sure that you select both Create Desktop Shortcut and Add to System Path Environment. Then on the final page, make sure that you select the checkbox that says Install Universal ADB Driver. You'll get a command prompt pop up, push any key to make it go away, close the prompt window, and then reboot your computer afterwards. Next up is link number two. Install the Unisoc drivers. Extract the zip and run the dpinst64.exe program. And you want to do that in whichever folder matches your Windows version. So Windows 11 users, you can use Windows 10. Now, turn on your RG405V and go ahead and enable USB debugging. Head to Settings, About, and tap on the build number seven times to see congratulations, you're a developer now. Head back one to system and then developer options, scroll to USB debugging and enable it. Let's go ahead and connect your RG405V to your PC now using a USB cable while it's turned on. Choose Always Allow USB Debugging and then Allow. Open a command prompt in Windows and write out the following command, ADB Reboot Bootloader. Your RG405V should reboot now and you'll see the text Fast Boot Mode on the screen next to the Ambernic logo. Head to link number three in the description on your PC and open it in Google Chrome, which is important. Click connect, then click fast boot gadget and connect again. Then you can click unlock. You're gonna get a warning on the device that says it might erase user data. Don't push anything on the device except the home and back button. And that's the button that's right in the middle of the device. If you accidentally push something else, and I did this, so don't worry, it'll say info user cancelled. Just close the browser, reopen it, click connect, connect, and unlock again, and this time only push the home and back button in the middle. Let it complete, and you'll see the unlock bootloader success. Close the Google Chrome window completely. In the command prompt window, write out fastboot, reboot, fastboot. You should get booted into Fastboot D mode and make sure it says Fastboot D on screen before we continue. Head to link number four and as of right now, we're on version 1.5.1, .1, but there might be a newer version in the future. Go ahead and grab either the light or the normal version for the RG405V. Like I said before, I strongly suggest the full version and I'll leave the light one for advanced users. Extract the zip to its own folder using 7-zip, which you can get from 7-zip.org, and then go ahead and open the flash partitions.bat script to start flashing the firmware. And that can take up to 10 minutes. When it finishes, it'll close after 60 seconds. Next up, go ahead and open the erase user data.bat script, and it'll factory reset your device for Gamma OS. This can also take up to 10 minutes, and you can just push any key when it's done. Once that's all done, reboot your RG405E by pushing the power button once. It's going to reboot, and it'll also stay on the Ambernic logo for about 2 minutes, and then boot into the firmware for the first time. Don't worry about any errors or messages, it's all normal. 
And then you're now on Gamma OS, so congratulations. Leave the device alone until the Gamma OS is updating message is gone. Then go ahead and go through all the normal prompts like you were setting up an Android device for the first time. It's going to boot into Daijisho as your front end once it's all done, and there's a few systems that are pre-configured. At this point, you can now put your SD card back in and just start setting up the device as you would. So adding any of your ROMs, your emulators, your BIOS files, all of that. If you happen to need a guide for emulators and all of that, I'm going to include links in the description to a few different videos that I've done that might help you get it all set up. Same token, if you need help setting up Daijisho for any of the other emulators, I'll include my Daijisho guide as well. Otherwise, enjoy your awesome big Game Boy Gamma OS device. Don't forget to like and sub to help the channel grow and hope you all have a good one.